self-portraits. Something artists have been inclined to do for forever. But where does that pull come from exactly? And what do we get out of making our own self our own subject? I have been taking self-portrait photographs consistently over years, trying to find this answer. And as someone who's pretty in their head for a lot of life, self-portrait sessions have become this oasis where the worrying and the overthinking that I'm so prone to can melt away. You'll actually witness that happen in the course of this video, because as you can see, I was not in a good headspace when I sat down to make this. The thousand yard stare, the posture, checking my mole and my crooked bottom teeth in the monitor. Yeah, I wasn't doing too hot. If this was my first time sitting down for a self-portrait, I would have called it quits right here. But now I know to stay in the seat because I can use this. This can be my motivation today. And that's why going into these sessions without a plan is always my plan. While waiting for my phone and camera to connect to one another, I started munching on some lifesavers to pass the time. And I realized how perfectly ironic this candy's presence was in this moment. I could really use a lifesaver right now. So why not use this in some test shots? I've been losing my mind. Not from whiskey. I've only just begun, but by this time, I'm already feeling better. It could be the music I'm blasting, it could be the anticipation of what I'll make today, or it could be the lifesaver. Either way, I had a light bulb moment here, and I realized that this portrait series was going to have a theme to reflect how I'd been feeling, overwhelmed and restricted. And I was going to do my best to make interesting images only with the things already in my studio. When I was taking this photo, I made this expression to be ironic for photographic interest. But looking back at it now, I see how I was also providing some kind of comic relief for myself about my situation. You'll find that sometimes you do put on a face or a front for the sake of the image, but that is one of the joys of this work. I do believe that self-portraiture is a performative and theatrical way to process emotions. Now, back in my Mary Poppins drawer was a sewing kit. A couple ideas immediately came to mind. The measuring tape was pretty on the nose since it's literally a symbol of measurement. So I thought it'd be interesting to try and encapsulate the feeling of not measuring up. The measuring tape literally overwhelming my head is the whole message right there. Figuring out the actual physics of this thing took me a minute, especially since I would need a free hand for my shutter button since I had abandoned the app at this point. This sort of distortion of my body has become a motif in my self-portrait work I've noticed, and I'm certainly not the first to do it. I think it's more comfortable to take these kinds of risks by myself than with a model. Things like this also take time to nail. It's a lot of tinkering, so I prefer to do it in a low pressure environment where the clock isn't ticking. I also love and appreciate the perspective shift I get from seeing myself so distorted. It's such a fun and interesting experiment and exploration of body and movement. It's amazing how such little manipulation makes such a large impact. Once I got this shot, I knew I could move on. I never planned on the measuring tape looking so similar to a bandage, but it does here, and that is the pure magic of play. And now for a quick thank you to KEH for sponsoring this video. KEH Camera is one of the, if not the greatest place to buy and sell used camera equipment on the entire World Wide Web. The selection of digital and film equipment is so vast, and every piece is thoroughly inspected so you know exactly what you're getting and there will be no mysteries when it shows up at your door. I buy almost all of my gear secondhand, and I can confidently say that the quality of the gear and the ease of the KEH process is truly next level. If it comes from KEH, it's the real deal. Be sure to check out KEH.com by using the link in my description. Now that I'm in my flow, I'm seeing everything in my studio a little differently. 
And now you're starting to see why it is so fun to photograph yourself. All the facets of your happy inner child light up. Curiosity, imagination, freedom, exploration. I think this is the biggest reason I walk out of self-portrait sessions feeling so different than how I did when I walked in. I've basically just been playing all day. With this glass lamp, I knew lighting it correctly was definitely not going to happen. So I went in knowing I was going to crop these images pretty drastically to avoid that inevitable reflection in the helmet. In the very least, self-portraits can be educational like this. It's a low pressure way to try new things and make quote unquote mistakes. And then magical things like this happen. Back in that sewing kit was of course a lot of thread and I couldn't stop thinking about it. I had a lot of ideas of what I could do with it, but I ended up going with my first idea, as I do most of the time. I never know if these ideas are going to work exactly how I imagine, but I am always confident I can make something out of the effort I put in, even if it's not what I originally pictured. The effort is always, always, always worth it. And that surprise element of, what's this going to look like? Am I in focus? Will any of these turn out? All of that is a part of the magic. And sometimes, later on, you find that those efforts might be on things that don't actually matter at all in the end. Like the color of this string. It literally isn't going to show up on camera. And future me made these images black and white, so it's a double whammy. But in this moment, I truly thought this was an important choice. It wasn't, but the color scheme's cute. The idea here is to wrap my arms up in this thread, symbolizing feeling confined and restricted. And here we go again with distorting my body. <laughs> I do it more than I realize, I think. To be honest, I never really think about the expression I'm going to make until I'm in front of the camera and pressing the button. So I kept all of this footage in, so you can see sort of a long take of this process. You'll see me also peeking over at my video camera pretty often, and that's because I'm using the screen there as a way to see the back of my stills camera so I can make sure I'm framed up correctly. You'll see I change my arms and my expression just a little bit for each frame, since I'm not trying to go for one specific thing. I'm just hoping to end up with something. So I make sure I'm diversifying each shot even just a little. Once I started taking self-portraits, I realized quickly that this is a lifelong pursuit for me. Doing it once naturally implied doing it again because I'm a new me every day. So the last session is no longer perfectly accurate of me now. One self-portrait session is not the destination, at least for me. It's a stepping stone from the last one to the next one. This practice has made me a better photographer every time I do it. For the final setup of this series, I wanted to incorporate water. I had some extra bottles lying around from a shoot, which originally sparked the idea. So here I'm testing the lighting and my timing of pressing the shutter and pouring the water. I'm also making sure that the water is aimed at my head. I guess there is always a chance I could miss. The process of drenching myself was pretty uncomfortable considering my studio is always at a very frigid temperature. But I know now that being uncomfortable, whether it be physical or emotional, is simply a part of this whole thing. It's also why I want to keep doing it. And I know it's also the biggest thing stopping other photographers from trying it. Especially with today's technology of live playback, self-portraits can be really, really revealing. You see how you hold yourself, your energy. You see how much of the thoughts in your head are playing out on your face. You see how much you're holding in. It can be uncomfortable because it's vulnerable. And it can show you all of your insecurities so vividly. But I've learned how over time, continually sitting down and facing it all, again and again, can turn into real, genuine self-acceptance. I think that's why self-portraiture is so precious, and I'd go as far to say sacred. 
It's a deeply personal, introspective, and private experience that ends up being incredibly self-affirming, and it can really fill your cup. I do believe every photographer would benefit from this exercise even just once. I don't particularly love this shot, but I noticed that big drop from my eyelash when editing and decided to crop in on that as the final image. That's also something I've learned from this, never to look over those small details. Self-portraits require so much more than the photographic work. It takes physical work, mental work, emotional work. The experience can completely exhaust you but it is quite possibly the most satisfying exhaustion I've ever felt. The reward, which is not the photos, by the way, is so, so sweet. I hope that worked. <sighs> okay, so I'm super happy with like many of those but I wanna do it again because there was one expression that I did, but I was not in focus and I was not framed up correctly. I was like way to the right and blurry. So I'm gonna retry that one. That's a wrap on that. I'm not even gonna look at the images from just now. I'm just gonna get dry, pack up and go home and let that be a surprise later on. <laughs> it's too cold. It can be a real paradigm shift going from living life almost like an astronaut in a spacesuit to seeing yourself from the outside as everyone else does but it is also immensely, immensely valuable for self-awareness, self-affirmation, and self-acceptance. I can't wait to share more about this topic in the future. I love you all, and remember, you're worthy of being photographed.
Stop.